Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. From today onwards, in our next few videos, we shall be talking about different aspects of population control. Population control is not only important for India, but also important for many other countries that can be a developing countries as well as a developed countries where the population growth is very high. But before we begin, we need to understand the meaning of certain words or certain terminologies which have some association with population control. The first one is family planning. What is family planning? Family planning are the practices that help individuals or couples to attain certain objectives. What are these objectives? Number one, to avoid unwanted births. So if the couple does not want to get pregnant, they can decide against the pregnancy so they can avoid these unwanted births. They can also bring about wanted births. So if this time the, the couple want to get pregnant, they can also bring about these pregnancies and wanted births. They can regulate the intervals between pregnancies. So if there are more than two children, they can decide how many years of gap they can have in between these two successive pregnancies. To control the time at which birth occurs in relation to the ages of the parents, especially the mother. So at what age of the father as well as the mother, especially the mother, uh, the childbirth, the pregnancy occurs because it is not physiologically as well as socially acceptable to have early pregnancy, especially in case of girls, to determine the number of children in the family. So they can also decide how many children they can have in their family. Next is eligible couple. What is eligible couple or who are the eligible couples? Eligible couple refers to a currently married couple. So that means couple who are married. We are not considering couples who stay together but not married of or if they are they are living in that is also not considered. So currently married couple wherein the wife is in the reproductive age group which is 15 to 49 years of age in some books or some articles you can also find it to be 15 to 45 years of age but it is better to say 15 to 49 years of age next is the target couples who are the target couples couples who have two to three living children so any couple who have two to three living children in their family is considered as target couples what is uh, what do you mean by the target the word target in target couples that means if a couple already have two to three living children they are the target for different family planning practices they should adapt different family planning practices so that there is no further pregnancy since we are uh, promoting the small family norm contraceptive prevalence rate is the percentage of women belonging to uh, reproductive age group that is 15 to 49 years of age uh, that can be married or in union that means we are also considering couples who are not married but staying together who are currently using or whose partners are currently using at least one method of contraception regardless of the method used so here we are considering all all couples they can be married or unmarried also any kind of family planning practice or method of contraception it does not matter what method they are using but if they are using any method that is also considered for contraceptive prevalence rate calculation then we have the couple protection rate or cpr which is somewhat similar to contraceptive prevalence rate but there is definite differences between them it is an indicator of the prevalence of contraceptive practice in the community what is the couple protection rate or CPR? It is the percentage of eligible couples effectively protected against childbirth by one or the other approved method of family planning practices. First point of difference is we are only considering eligible couples. We are not considering couples who are not married or they are living in. 
so we are only considering the eligible couples and by definition they are the currently married couples also we are only considering one or the other approved method of family planning we are not just considering any method we are only uh, considering the approved method of family planning what are this approved method of family planning sterilization which is basically the permanent method we can have vasectomy or tubectomy we can have iud that is intrauterine devices there are three generations different generations we have condom which is one of the barrier methods and we have oral pills we can have different hormonal preparations for that so these are the different approved method which are considered for calculating the couple protection rate to achieve the demographic goal of net reproductive rate one that is nrr one in a given community the couple protection rate must be above 60 percent so if the cpr exceeds 60 percent we can achieve the demographic goal of nrr equal to one since our childhood we have always known that china is the most populated country in the world followed by india but few months back in the year 2023 india have gone past china in terms of population you can see from this table and this table had been updated in the month of july 2023 the population of india is 1.428 billion whereas in india in china it was 1.425 billion but there is a bigger problem if you look at the land area that means the geographical area of the two countries you will see the china is a much bigger country compared to india and because of that the population density of india is more than three times than that of china so that is a big problem so not only we are overpopulated but also we are overcrowded more dense in population and we also know how pop overpopulation overcrowding are associated with different health related problems different social problems etc moving forward next we are going to talk about the national population policy 2000 what is a population policy it is basically any policy intended to decrease the birth rate or growth rate we know birth rate and growth growth rate is basically birth rate minus the death rate so how first a population is increasing in number for a country how first the number of people in that country is increasing and the population policy intends to decrease that growth rate the first population policy in India was formed in the year 1976 and what was done in, the, in that particular population policy? The minimum legal age of marriage was increased for both boys and girls. For girls it was increased from 15 years to 18 years and for boys it was increased from 18 years to 21 years. In the year 1977 this policy was modified and more focus was given on the small family norm and the name of the program was also changed to family welfare program national health policy was approved by 1983 by the parliament in the year 1983 uh, and it set a long-term demographic goal of achieving a net reproductive rate of one by the year 2000 which was yet not achieved by the year 2000 and even in 2023 we are yet to achieve it national population policy 2000 was the last in the national population policy series national population policy 2000 not only deals with the control of the growth rate in our country but also other very important things like women education women empowerment for improved health and nutrition child survival and health the unmet needs for family welfare services, health care for the underserved population like urban slums, tribal community, hilly area populations, and displaced and migrant population. Also, adolescent health and their education, and increased participation of men in planned parenthood and collaboration with non-government organizations. So, as you can see, apart from the control of the growth rate in a country, there are a lot of other things which were also considered in National Population Policy 2000. The objective of National Population Policy 2000 was to bring the total fertility rate to replacement level by the year 2010. 
now in the uh, to to achieve all these objectives of npp 2000 or national population policy 2000 the national socio demographic goals were formed and we wanted to achieve these goals by the year 2010 so what are the different goals in national uh, socio demographic goals the first one is to address the unmet needs for basic reproductive and child health services supplies and infrastructure to make school education up to the age 14 years free and compulsory that means all children must get free education and it has to be compulsory up to the age of 14 years at least and reduce dropouts at primary and secondary school levels below 20 percent for both boys and girls to reduce the infant mortality rate or imr below 30 per 1000 live births and to reduce the mmr that is maternal mortality ratio below 100 per 1 lakh live births to achieve universal immunization of children against all vaccine preventable diseases so that is why we have the national immunization schedule which mentions at which age a child is received uh, supposed to receive which vaccines there is a long list and it is still being updated to promote delayed marriage for girls not earlier than age 18 and preferably after 20 years of age so here we have even further increased the age of marriage the minimum age of marriage ideally more than 20 years but not before than 18 years okay and to achieve 80 percent institutional deliveries and 100 percent deliveries by trained persons so we want all the deliveries to be institutionalized that means deliveries being conducted at hospitals at least it should be 80 percent and 100% of these deliveries must be by trained persons. So ideally by doctors or nurses, even if they are not available, trained birth attendants or trained health workers must conduct these deliveries. Achieve universal access to information, counseling and services for fertility regulation and contraception with wide basket of choices. So this is one of the objectives for family planning. The couples should have adequate knowledge information regarding different options for their family planning and they should also have lot of choices for the family planning methods to achieve 100 percent registration of birth death marriage and pregnancy so it is ideal that all the births deaths marriages and even pregnancies in a given country must be registered certain i am sorry uh, contain the spread of acute immunodeficiency syndrome that is aids and promote greater integration between the management of rti that is a reproductive tract infection sexually transmitted infection that is sti and the national aids control organizations so all these sexually transmitted diseases and uh, along with the naco that is national aids control organization must work together uh, to control the spread of these diseases the rti sti and the aids to prevent and control different communicable diseases integrate indian system of medicine in the provision of reproductive and child health services and in reaching out to households to promote vigorously small family norm to achieve replacement level of tfr to bring about convergence in implementation of related social sector program so that family welfare become a pupil centered program so people in the community must be involved uh, to decide about different family welfare practices so these are all the nas national socio demographic goals which are to be received by 2010 we are well past the year 2010 we have somewhat achieved few of the objectives but most of the objectives are yet to be achieved but if we don't keep any target we are not going to get any close to it so that is why these objectives were kept and also timeline was kept so uh, after this we shall learn about the different methods of family planning in our next uh, video and the subsequent videos uh, today we have discussed what is national population policy and what are the objectives of different policies to control the growth rate of a country and also other important factors social factors 
we have also learned certain terminologies in context of family planning or population control we conclude today's session here and if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends we also have a facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video